recently at a car boot sale, I found a camera that I knew nothing about. And this is it. From a distance, I thought it was going to be a Kodak um, Retinette or Retina or something similar. And when I opened it on the car boot sale um, table, I found this rather nice looking 35mm camera with a name I didn't recognise. It's made in Japan and it's, um, I think you pronounce it um, Samika, as a M O C A, Samika um, 35. And it is a 35mm rangefinder camera and it has quite an unusual linkage at the front here. You can see that we have a rangefinder and that you move the lens and as you're moving the lens there's a mechanism here which is moving the rangefinder and it's telling you the distance. So you look on this second it's a tiny bit like the Lubrital that I was looking at the other week that you've got two lenses or well you've got a cog link um, and it's very visible. So we have a nice working rangefinder there. The aperture is right at the front and it's a 3.5 to 22. It sets the shutter as you wind on. It's extremely smooth. It's a very well engineered camera. I had a good look online and couldn't find out an awful lot about it. This company seems to have been making cameras from about 1952 to the early 60s. There was a um, number of similar type of cameras. It's quite well made. As I said, um, the shutters on the top. It has a slight like a look with the counter here, but it's squatter. Um, it's um, the changing the shutter speed is down here. The shutter speeds are quite limited, bulbed to 200, but that's absolutely fine. We've got a flash control. We have a flash connection here. So this is quite a well for about 1955-56. This is a well spec camera. It, it handles extremely nicely. It's a nice design. That shutter button there is just the right size I found and so I took it out and because it all seemed to mechanically work well so the only thing to do was go and put a film for it. Before I talk about that you open the camera up at the bottom here and it slides out and it hasn't got a flexible back. The back is like this, which you did find on some West German cameras as well of the time. So that back goes on top and the it slides on and locks at the bottom. As I said, it fits very well in the hand. Let's see how I got on when I actually used the camera. There's no exposure meter so I'm going to have to use um, Sunny 16 rule or a um, meter. Um, in the event I actually forgot the meter and I had to use Sunny 16 rule. Let's see how I got on. The first photograph is I think very sharp indeed. The rangefinder is just slightly out. How Ever, I checked the focusing carefully on the scale and this has worked out absolutely fine. The lens has got that sort of vintage look to it slightly. It is very clear. I can't see any focus in the glass. I think it's just that type of lens and it's actually for the camera it's a good quality lens. The whole feel of this camera is very smooth. The shutter, which appears to be a leaf type, and I think only goes up to, I think it was 300, 
was extremely smooth and reliable. The camera is smaller than you would actually expect. It fits into the hand in a very ergonomic manner. And again, I found it a complete joy to use. It's a camera I had never seen before and I wasn't quite sure how it was going to perform. Again, you can see the lens going straight into the sun is absolutely fine. The range of grays is good. This is taken on former Pan 100 and developed into ID with ID 11 diluted one to one for 10 minutes. I have then scanned it using a Epson Perfection scanner. Again, it was taken in the late afternoon, early evening, so we've got a good range of shadows. The camera performed incredibly well, I think. We have sharp images, we have clear images, the shutter is accurate. Yes, I was not using a light meter, I was using the Sunny 16 rule. And even again, taking directly into the lens, we have a reduced amount of flare. It must be a coated lens. The landscape here works absolutely fine. The detail is good. This was a camera that I came across completely by chance, but really enjoyed using. This was probably the most testing shot as it was beginning to get a little bit dim and I think this was taken at um, f4 and perhaps even at a 50th or even a bit slower. But in conclusion a most enjoyable camera. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.